Further Maths method of differences. Let's take a look at this. There's a cool trick I'm going to show you guys when it comes to partial fractions. So find this sum, obviously in terms of n. Now the method of differences is just summing in values and showing that most of everything just cancels out, right? But to do that, we're going to have to rewrite this problem. So we're taking the sum from r equals 1, so the first term. So if you want, you could sub in r is 1, that will tell you the first term. r is 2, will tell you the second term, etc. And we're summing all the way up to the nth term. So the method of difference is going to rewrite this, and we're going to rewrite it using partial fractions. Now, when the denominator is linear, meaning there's no squares, we can do a really cool trick. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. It's going to save you some time in your exam. So we're going to have a over r, b over r plus 1, and then c over r plus 2. Now, what's the trick? If you want to work out a, you look at the denominator, and you say what value of r would make the denominator 0. In this case, it is 0. And what you end up doing is you just cover this denominator on both sides. Yeah, so to find a, what we're going to do is I'm going to sub in r is 0 into what's left after covering up r. So in this case, a is 0 plus 4 divided by 0 plus 1. I mean, I didn't need to write 0 plus 4. But 0 plus 1 is 1 times 0 plus 2, which is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Easy, mate. Now to find b, look at the denominator. What value of r makes this 0? That's going to be minus 1. Okay, cover it, cover it. We're going to sub in minus 1 now. So I have minus 1 plus 4 divided by, so don't forget that r, minus 1 times minus 1 plus 2, which is just 1. So we're left with minus 1 plus 4, which is 3, divided by negative 1, minus 3. OK, then for C, yeah, maybe you guys can do it whilst I'm doing it. What's the value of C going to be? We're going to cover this up when r is minus 2. Cover it here. r is minus 2. We're going to get minus 2 plus 4, divided by minus 2, times minus 2 plus 1, which is minus 1. Remember, we covered that one up. So we're left with minus 2 plus 4, which is 2, divided by 2, so 1. OK, so what is our sum going to be? This is going to be the sum from r equals 1 to n of which one should we do first? doesn't really matter, I guess. I think it's just better to just write this one first. So 2, yeah, just do it in order. So 2 over r, then b is minus 3 over r plus 1. And then we have c, which is 1 over r plus 2. All right, sweet. Now we can apply the method of differences by subbing in our values. OK, so let's do that. We're going to sub in r is 1, r is 2, r is 3. I usually just go up to 3 just to see what happens in it. All right. Now, don't simplify things. Just uh, keep it simple. I'm going to simplify the denominators, but that's it. So I have 2 over 1. I cannot be bothered to write that as just 2. Minus 3 over 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 1 over 1 plus 2 is 3. Now, when r is 2, we get 2 over 2 minus 3 over 3, yeah, um, which is interesting, plus 1 over 4. Then when we have 3, we get 2 thirds minus 3 over 4 plus 1 over 5. I mean, I'm not really seeing a pattern yet. Can you see how it's cancelling? Uh, I actually can now, <laughs> but I'm going to do another row just to prove the point. So if you can't see yeah, the direct cancellation, just keep going. So we have 2 quarters minus 3 over uh, 4 plus 1, which is 5, plus 1 over 6. 
Now, in terms of the simplifications, this is why I don't simplify these, because I'm, I'm observing the denominators. Yeah, when we're adding all of these, remember this is the first term, but we're adding all of these, right? Always observe the denominators. I'm going to compare all the terms with the same denominator. For example, this has over 1. It's not going to simplify with anything, but this is over 2. Minus 3 over 2 plus 2 over 2 does not actually cancel. However, when I look at the 3s, when I look at the 3s, I have 2 minus 3, which is minus 1, plus 1, which is 0, meaning the over 3s are cancelling along that diagonal. Let's look at the 4s. 2 minus 3 is minus 1, plus 1. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's what's happening. We're cancelling along these diagonals. It's a trio, which means this would cancel. The 1 over 6 would cancel. We have to decide up to how much are we going. Now up here, you can see there's this trio, yeah, that survived, which means there's going to be a trio down here, which will also survive, because we're, we're cancelling like this, aren't we? Yeah, so there's going to be a trio down here, which means I need to go up to the second last line and the last line. Remember, the last line is going to be n, right? So we're going to have r equals n, and the line above that, n minus 1. So we're going up to all of these terms. Okay, now when we sub in n minus 1, we're going to get 2 over n minus 1, smudge in the board, minus 3 over, when you sub in n minus 1, n minus 1 plus 1 is just n. Then here, we're going to get 1 over uh, n minus 1 plus 2 is n plus 1. Okay, now when we have n, it's just a copy and paste. 2 over n minus 3 over n plus 1. And then 4, 1, sorry, over n plus 2. Now remember how this is cancelling. We're cancelling along the trios. This 3 survived. These 3 are going to survive. These over n's, they're going to end up cancelling, and that's going to end up cancelling. So what are we going to be left with? Basically the end. And, you know, usually they ask you to um, write it all into one fraction. So we'll do that. So what are we left with, Moi? We're left with these three terms. So we have 2 over 1. I'm going to keep it as 2 over 1 because we're going to be putting everything into one fraction, right? Look at the diagonals. 2 over 2 minus 3 over 2 is minus a half. Here, looking at the diagonals, minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2 over n plus 1. And then finally, we got plus 1 over n plus 2. Now, uh, a lot of people make the mistake here when it comes to combining the fractions. So just take your time. Avoid any silly mistakes. So we're going to take one of everything. It's going to be 2 lots of n plus 1 and n plus 2. For this, it's just 1. So we're going to times top and bottom by all of this. 2 times 2 is 4 n plus 1 n plus 2. This already has the 2, so we're going to multiply by all this. It's going to be minus n plus 1 and n plus 2. This is missing 2 and n plus 2. If we had the minus 2 there, so it's going to be minus 4. Uh, what was it? n plus 2. This is there, so we're going to multiply by this. So 1 times this is 2, n plus 1. Now, rather than writing a whole new line, just expand it here. n times n is n squared times 4, 4n squared. 2n plus n is 3n. 3n times 4 is 12n. Uh, 2 times 4, 8. n squared minus uh, 3n minus 3n. 2 minus 2. Uh, minus 4n minus 8. Ooh, they will cancel. Uh, plus 2n plus 2. So I just noticed that straight away. Anything else? Oh, actually, yeah, mate. Anything else? Uh, well, not that I can see just yet. 4n squared minus n squared is 3n squared. Uh, so that is done. Nope, there we go. 12 minus 3, uh, 9. <laughs> 
9 minus 4, 9 minus 4, 5, 5 plus 2, 5 plus 7. Ayo, hey, now I'm bugging. I did all this crazy mass and then I'm bugging on this. Oh, that's nice. Uh, because all those constants cancelled, this we can... I'm pretty sure... I mean, it's a long time ago. But I'm pretty sure they would have wanted you to factorize the numerator. So this gives us n. Usually they give you the form, right? And it's as factorized as it can be. So 3n plus 7 over 2n plus 1 n plus 2. And this would be a huge question in your exam. Seven or eight marks, but you can't afford to lose those marks. So guys, if you like this video, hit the like button. It helps me out a lot. And I hope this helped you out too. And make sure you're subscribed for more content like this. Nice.